Ah, uh, welcome back everyone to an episode of Castile! Soon to be Spain, and soon to be ruler of the new colonial empire. And finally guys, after much deliberation and practices, we finally got to a new world, and I finally got a name for it. And the name I finally decided on was Terra Espana. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, well that's a very simple name, and for those of you guys who don't know, Terra Espana roughly translates into translates into the land of Spain, but, you know, if you really look at it, explorers weren't really didn't really cleverly name anything. Like, if you ever looked at the name Pittsburgh, it really was just Pitts and Burg. You just add those two things again, it's the Pit, I think Pitts, it's the Pit City. That's basically the name of it. So, <laughs> I mean, it fits, it fits it so perfectly. The names are pretty much, and by the way, I'm not actually sure if Pittsburgh is named that, but it's just... Kind of an example, I would assume so, because Pit means just Pit, and Bergs means just Berg. Bergs is about a city or a town, so... Yeah, I'm just assuming, guys. I'm not... Don't... I don't actually know, but it's just... I'm just showing you guys an example of what I think could happen, so... But, yeah. Explorers were usually just not clever... Did not cleverly name anything, so... I think it's a direct possibility that... That the name could be Terra Espana. Oh, and I would like to give out a shout-out to the other guy who also suggests... Who also suggested, um... La Verdera La La Verde Espana 2. Because that was also a pretty good name too. I was thinking that. But and ultimately I decided that this had to be that had to be the name Terra Espana. Because that is that is basically what it is. It's the land. It's the land of Spain. No one else can claim it but Spain. But now here comes the problem with this, people, and I didn't even think of this, was the fact that we have no way of colonizing that great and luscious land over there. I mean, I want to go over there so badly. Like, I want to be colonizing right here, right now, and doing all the crazy stuff. And, you know, doing much more exploration and hardships and, you know, just doing so much. But we can't because of stupid reasons. And there's Fernando again. The greatest explorer that ever lived. He's seriously explored almost two entire continents by himself. That's a pretty impressive feat for one explorer. I mean... You could, you could give your credit to Al Coronado, you could give your credit to Bizarro, you could give your credit to Cortez. They may have been great conquerors, but they were not great as this guy was. This guy has literally discovered an entire continent and should be recommended as such. Alright, so we still got an uh, overextension, which kind of makes me mad, but I'm not really in the boat right now to delete it, but we will here in a couple minutes. Loreen is in the Civil War. Loreen, Loreen, Loreen. Ah, uh, don't really have much to say about Louis. Louis has usually just been a, a trouble province for both France and Germany, so yeah, not really much to say about that. And what happened to my fleet? Oh yeah, they're still on the path of destruction. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go group them back over here. Let's gain back control of my uh, port again because I'm pretty sure Seville was out of my control while we were trading and doing all this other stuff. Yeah, because Portugal's a really jerk when it comes to try taking my trade power. Let's see. Oh my goodness, they actually do have a lot of trade power. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. That, that fixed the problem quickly. So yeah, we got our trade power back in our region. We're going to be soon trading up. We're going to be soon trading up again, which is nice. You guys, I think I'll go have trade in the... Not the Manchurian coast. Uh, the Bordeaux. May... Boudou. Yeah, let's go train the Bordeaux. It's Bordeaux, by the way, guys. It's not Bordeaux. It's Bordeaux. The French pronunciation there going to work. So, let's see. Do we have any docks we can build? We can build one in Barcelona. Let's build one in Barcelona. And I just realized I was saving up my different points so that we could finally core this. No, I'm saving up my admin points so we could finally core this. Uh, but before we do that, I have to delete that. Core this. Yeah. We, we should really seriously core these things. So if we don't core these things, these things are going to come back to bite us pretty quickly. I know I always, I know I'm usually very lackadaisical when it comes to most things, but this is one of those things I really, really should do if I don't want to get into long-term jeopardy problems. Um, army-wise, eh, it could be higher. Right now our army is, eh, I would say fairly well balanced, but I think it's finally time to add some more knights into the mix. We want to have, at the max we use, this is that. Usually people I like to keep my armies about 6 cavalry, about 18 regiments of soldiers, and 10 regiments or 12 regiments of artillery. That usually balances out my army pretty nicely. 
usually it doesn't, I don't have to go any bigger, and oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it's starting to come back to me, everything that's about this game. Sorry people, it's been about a week since I played this game. I usually have to record these episodes in chunks because, you know, school is a pain. Well, it's not only a pain, I'm glad to have education and all, but it's a pain for the fact that I cannot record at any time I want or do what I want at any point, so I just realized I have an extra diplomat slot. What am I doing? I'm still well married to France, and I have an alliance with Naples. Okay, Naples... Yeah, I... I don't see why I need an alliance with you, so I'm gonna have to cut it off. I'm sorry. I know you guys are probably very mad at me, but... Yeah. You guys are also, I think, under a personal union again, so that's not good, but... Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, I just remembered about a couple things, and one of the things I just remembered is the fact that we have a... Oh, no, we don't have a terrible ruler. That was the previous guy. <laughs> the previous guy that was like, zero, zero, zero. I don't even know how you get that. Like, I usually get at least one point. That's Basically, at that point, you'd rather have a Regency Council than him. I mean, this guy was just clearly not built for leadership, but I personally not minded Rebels Revolted. And right now we have the Papal Sea Controller. We're gonna be fighting off the stupid French. I mean, not the stupid French, the British. The red coats that are coming for us, I guess. Uh, lose the prestige, or lose some Diplo Power. I could do that. And Denmark! Hmm. You know, if Denmark actually gets its act together, it could actually become a pretty good, like, colonial power. Um, will it get its act together? Probably not. As, as far as I know, Denmark is not the biggest, like, in terms of that. And I think I might actually have to kick this guy out because. Um, I actually can't afford him, and we're actually making decent amount of militaristic power as it is, so I don't think I'll need him. Uh, Grenadian rebels, not really an issue. They're, they're not going to revolt, trust me. We're way too nice of people for them to do that. The only thing I do worry about, though, is that we still have these two things right here, and I cannot fix it. Oh my goodness, that annoys me to no end. You guys, I really wish you guys were not my friends right now, but you guys are. Oh, the colonialist! Ah, oh, shoot. So that means, okay, so since they have a ruler that's a colonial, King Alfonso the Six. Oh no, they enacted a reform. That's also not good. So we have two things that are not good. First of all, Portugal is the big colonialist. That means we will have to be probably competing with them, and our colonies will probably be competing with them to fight for the general rights to be a colony. And we have the Austrian government reforming the uh, Holy Roman Emperor. They've just started down. They just called for the call for rights reform. I and that's where it's, this starts to get really hairy because if they fully reform, we have really no chance of catching up to them. A fully reformed Germany is usually the most deadly thing in this game, besides for a fully reformed Russia. I think the Russians could be the second biggest threat in the game, but definitely the biggest threat in the game is a fully reformed uh, Holy Roman Emperor. That would be the scariest thing in this game, and without a doubt would be the most powerful for my empire, and something I hope to avoid. Anyways, we have just upgraded our military, military to a greater form of unit measures. I don't know, people. Sometimes these things just come out of my head. So, we just are upgrading. Do we want the defense? Or we want the attack. You know, I'm more of an attack, but... Hmm... More to morale. I think this one honestly gives a better overall status, so that's the one I'm gonna go with. Mm. Our explorer over here is still exploring. I should probably just go set him on a long, like. Oh! oh. Portugal! Okay, so Portugal can apparently colonize from there to there. This is not good. That means they're going to be starting on colonies way before we do, and they're getting all the good colonies, may I add. So, this isn't good. And over here, our colony are not doing anything. We could probably just go send them straight through here. And let's just, you know, let's just start exploring some of this land over here. No, you guys go through there. It just, whatever you guys do, just keep exploring over there. Fernando, you are like a great explorer. And the day you die, I'm seriously going to hold like a funeral or a festival. Or we're going to eat, or we're going to go to Clairewall in Portugal. That's what we'll do. If we die, if you die, we're gonna go to play one Portugal. Because your death means that much to me. You've done so much for our country. You are truly going to be a hero of my country. We finally caught Barcelona. That means my overextension has officially been 
you know, downtrodden. I don't have to deal with it as much anymore, so that's nice. We still don't have enough for the Valencian core, though. And there we go. We're back to having Cataline as a subculture. Again, not going to convert that because it could possibly become an accepted culture. In fact, I'm really hoping it does become an accepted culture, just saying. So that we don't have to let court. And if it does become an accepted culture, we will have massive amount of attacks. A new Cardinals! Is it mine? No. Well, the good thing about this, though, is that we do have another Cardinal inside the Papal Sea. The Papal Sea. So let's just start working on this new guy. Let's work on a noob. Because the noob needs to become ours. Because we need to have it. And let's look over here, back over here, and look at the trade nodes. Now we could start planning out some of our trade nodes, so... Let's see, so the Chesapeake Bay kind of leads into everything, and... Well, actually, the Caribbean trade node, sorry, people. So, the Caribbean trade node would probably be the trade node we would most likely want to go for, well... Yeah, because since it leads into everything else, we could probably get a lot of trade and steer it from there. Ooh, the Caribbean trade nodes, too. And in terms of colonial... Legitimacy or prestige? You know, I can also lose some prestige right now. Oh, whoops, uh, legit legitimacy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, but colonial region wise, um, most likely we'll start colonizing Guiana because that'll be the easiest island. We could probably own this island. And I've officially decided this is just an island. This is just a g gigantic island. A lot of people could debate me in the comments about why it could not be, but to me, that is always just going to be an island. Okay. Let's see, we still just have a couple more years until we do that. The Peasants War for Napoli. Oh, I'm so glad I decided not to be your friend. And France has apparently declared war on them. And took a lot of this, took a little bit of this stuff. That's kind of sad. France is being a bully. I can't really help it because they're kind of a bully to me too. Uh, but let's see, do you have any powerful alliances right now? Because I just, I don't know, I'd feel like declaring war on you, but I can't. The Pope has elected Benefix, whatever, with some kind of guy. Just keep getting our relationships up. Yeah, declaring one you would be pretty nice right about now, Aragon. Like, I just want to make sure by the end of this game, you are just nothing. I just have all this border. Oh, uh, that'd be nice. Especially when I'm trying to defend against France, that'd be really nice. Let's see, Terra Econita. Yeah, I don't think France, I don't think you can actually cross from over here, so. If we were to get a land border, like right about there between us and France, hmm, that'd be pretty nice. Yeah, so we might, we're gonna be thinking about that. We're gonna be thinking about conquest over there. Um, colonial conquest wise, we can't really do much, because we're kind of just stuck in this position. Let's get the, uh, let's keep unlocking some more of our ideals. I think we're gonna try to get for, um, not vice wars, vice wars would be useless to us. But I think we're gonna try to get for a bigger expansion into territory. Um, we're bas basically, guys, I can't really colonize for a little bit because, yeah, I've already, I've already explained why. So, yeah, we can't really colonize for a little bit. I'm so sorry, it's just how it's gonna work out. And continue to reconquista. Well, is it a good time to attack them? You know, to attack Morocco, it would be a great time. So, yeah, that's maybe what I'll do. It's finally... Let's... <laughs> let's go attack Morocco. I mean, honestly, I don't think they would have that big of a military. And honestly, having a land would be pretty nice. The only problem is that they would have a lot of rebellions. That's my only worry about this entire event. Is that they're probably gonna have lots of rebellions if I do this. But I do have instant cores on them. And I could honestly, like, to be fair, I could probably also take Tunis in the deal, then go take, uh, Morocco, but that may be stretching it just a little bit. Okay, apparently we're also taking massive money woes, so I'm just going to delete my advisor so I can start getting back my money. This is too much. Yeah, it's just way too much. Of course, taxation. Wow, we are not making a lot. Uh, yeah, you guys are not making us a lot for our good Hispanian Empire. Let's get this finally cord, and we can finally get some more money from over here, too. But yeah, an attack on Morocco, I think that'd be the most beneficial thing to the Castilian Empire. So, 
Let's stop preparing for this by building up some more cogs. Okay, we can only build two cogs. That was a little bit anticlimactic. And let's start thinking about our plan of attack. Um, as far as we know, I don't think Morocco has very many troops. They usually don't. If they do, they're lower rate troops. So I don't expect a much of a big fight. A little bit of a fight, no doubt. But what am I doing? Musk Morocco's right up here. There we go. Yeah, only 16k, and Tunis has about 7k, probably about 12k in total due to like other stuff, so we're looking at a very, very possibility of just steamrolling them if I can get my entire army of this across quickly. If we can't get our entire army across quickly, then they could possibly win and destroy us, which would be terrible if any of you guys know like stuff. It'd be terrible if they somehow like beat us to it. So we're really gonna have to like think of this, really struggle through this, and let's just keep investing in the cardinal. There we go. Building slots. I don't really need buildings, just keep building more cards. That's all I need. Just keep building more cards. Cause we're gonna need to build a lot of cards for this to work. Or at the very least just 10. So that we can ferry over 10 men, have them safely in Armenia, then go ferry over 10 more men, have them safely in. That way we can just do anything we want. And then from there, could we also declare war on the nice people of Algiers? Or are you still allied with the Ottomans? You guys are still allied with the Ottomans, and plus you guys are even eviler than anything. And Granada was apparently just had a revolt, and apparently does not have a revolt anymore. And apparently, Derniga has accepted religious unity with Austria, and they now are the Catholic faith. So, Protestantism is apparently breaking out more rampantly in Germany. Uh, predictions, Sweden's gonna go Protestant, Bohemia's gonna go Protestant, and uh, Poland's gonna go Protestant. Yeah, they're my predictions, everyone. Let's see if they come true. Okay, we're also going to, we have not, we have not built enough temples yet? Oh my goodness, where have we been? Yeah, let's, let's start getting more temples. Temples have increase everything and make the world go round. Get you guys over here. And I think this is probably going to be an episode for today, people. Yeah, it's a little bit short of an episode, I think. Or well, it's about the same length. I do not know, but I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.